Anna Welford was really relatable. She um, really resonated with us and was just really easy to talk to. Immediately when I got there, I just had this really nice, this feeling that came over me. And I don't know, she was just very friendly and open to talk about anything. Hi, I'm Noah. Hey. So earlier you talked about creating a cultural shift. And it appears to me that some of the gender discrimination today is not so much intentional as the result of culture. Yeah. How can we as in individuals confront our own internal biases? So um, my favorite thing that happened this summer is my kids told me, I mean this is you know last August, they told me they'd signed up for a um, women and gender studies class. The reason I think it was great and great for them is that um, they are white boys from a privileged background and this class really like pried their eyes open to the fact that they had, um, the way they looked at the world was informed by who they were. And I think any time, I mean frankly for all of us, everybody in this room, any time you can um, be in a situation where your, um, your inherent biases, um, your sort of cultural norms are challenged, I think that is so incredibly valuable. And so, I mean, in my job, I get mine challenged every day. It's not even, it's not comfortable to realize that, you know, I am a, a white woman. Sometimes I don't look at the world the way that I should be because of who I am and how I grew up. And I luckily have really great people around me who will challenge me and say, are you kidding me? You can't do that, you, you know, or, you know, we don't have enough women of color on this panel. We've got to fix that, things like that. I think that many of us, we stay in our comfortable bubble and we don't allow those outside people from different backgrounds or different ideas to infiltrate who we are in our thought. And so when you are in a situation where somebody um, believe something so differently than, than you do, it's, it is a really uncomfortable thing often. But, um, but we're supposed to be uncomfortable, that's how you learn. I really enjoy talking to Susanna Welford because she, you can just tell by talking to her how much hope she has and how she'll never give up for what she believes in. And I thought that was really inspiring. Talking about your reasoning for coming to Washington and your passion for politics, you said, I came to Washington during the euphoria of the Kennedy years with that sense of, not, of asking not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That inspiration has stayed with me through life. The roots of so much of that came in my very young years in high school and college, feeling this great desire to be part of a bigger world where even a young woman from a small town could have an impact. Given the current state of our political landscape, what what are the elements of the call that you want our generation to hear now, and do you find that our generation is responding? Well, I think the call is very much the same, and I do think, uh, and thank you for the question, because in many respects, even though it was a different time, um, some things are, are evergreen or universal, and I think uh, it goes for, for all of you as well. Um, first of all, I think that you're part of this program is very illustrative of the fact that you do care, you do know that you can make a difference however you make it. Um, but this, this spirit of what kind of world do I want to see, what kind of country do I want to live in, what, how do I want my community uh, to be, in large measure, it's up to each and every one of us. And I think the, the spirit that affected so many of us in those Kennedy years, and I was one of literally millions of people who were affected by this sense of idealism. The Peace Corps was birthed. There was um, this appeal that, um, that we can, each of us, no matter where we sit, that we can, we can have, uh, we can offer a great deal um, in, our own, in our own experiences. That, in particular, called many to public service. And one of my great um, pains uh, is the fact that politics has been so demeaned, uh, when politics, in many ways, is a noble calling. Uh, it's really about coming together, representing in a representative democracy, uh, representing countless people and their interests, um, to make our society 
uh, more perfect. Every day we're working at how to perfect our union. We are far from perfect, but it's up to all of us to get um, to that different higher stage. It was really great getting to interview all these people. Uh, you never really get to see the passion end of their work. You only get to hear the criticism in the newspaper, so it's really great to get that other perspective. They're just all really passionate about what, what they do. Um, they just have really strong feelings for um, their work, and you can just tell that through the way they answer their questions very carefully. Currently, I'm kind of not really sure what I want to do after high school. I know I want to go to college, but I think getting some advice from these really powerful leaders will help me kind of develop a path that I want to go on and reach.